I think I finally found a solution to a little bit of a problem that I've been having. Let me explain. <laughs> What's happening? I'm Will. I'm Christy. And this is Puma Dog. After years of overlanding across the United States, we decided to hang up normalcy and move full time into imaging our 21 foot travel trailer. Our goal is to set up base camp in different regions of the U.S. and explore the areas around us. We invite you to join us as we share our adventures of full time living. All right, so today I'm in Victoria where I'm picking up what I think to be the solution to my very inefficient RV fridge. What I'll tell you is thing is a son of a bitch to get in here and it's way big yo this thing is sweet looking huh wow yeah first impressions is wow definitely big but wow look at that fancy like it. Same with this side. My plan is to basically rework this area that we're in right now. The futon that I've got, I've had for about a year now. It's kind of worn out and it's really not working out that great for us. It's super uncomfortable. Plus, one thing we didn't realize whenever we moved in here that we would want is going to be a workspace. Working from inside of this thing is incredibly cumbersome. I could turn this entire thing into a desk, but then we lose an area where we like to lounge, watch TV. Plus, you see Pumbaa dog sleeps up here, and we don't let him sleep up on our bed with us, and we'd like to keep it that way. The Dometic fridge that we have is super inefficient. I think that I can replace it with this new Iceco fridge, and it'd be more efficient. Whenever I do that, because of the difference in design, I think that I'm going to be able to rearrange this entire setup that I have, make it to where we can still lounge like we want to, but also have a sliding fridge. The very first thing that I have to do before I do any of that is I have to see what the efficiency is on the new Iceco fridge. I'll tell you, I do know that the Dometic is super inefficient, and I'll show you guys how I know that. I'm not going to use the most scientific ways to measure these things. There's far more accurate ways that you can get accurate readings like wattage, kilowatts, amp hours, different things like that. All I'm doing is a very rudimentary style test. Basically, I'm taking the Victron Auto Connect app, which is the app that tells me exactly what's coming in and out of the batteries and I'm reading the wattage that's going out on the batteries whenever I have the fridge turned on to AC and whenever I have the ice coat turned on to AC. I believe that the ice coat running on AC is going to be about the same as running on DC. I'll also test that out but first I want to see what the baseline is for the Dometic so I've turned it off for a little while I'm gonna turn it on and show you guys what the wattage is being used whenever it's kind of keeping cool because like I said it was on all day so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Dometic right now and see what the wattage is all right so I've turned it on and I put it to auto which means that it's automatically gonna choose AC because AC is available now we're running completely off of our batteries so it's being inverted with an inverter and that's more in our solar setup but just know that it is running off of what it thinks to be AC. So as you can see at almost 400 watts the Dometic is super power hungry and it'll run through those batteries pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to gas now so that way it runs on the propane and then I'm gonna plug in the ice code 90. Now one thing that you have to realize though is the ice code has not been cooled off so I'm gonna set the temperatures to both zones uh, one at fridge and one freezer just the same way we would run it and then I'm gonna plug it in via AC and I'm gonna let it cool all the way down. Now what happens with a fridge is the compressor comes on and then off and it cycles through in order to maintain a desired temperature. So with that being said, whenever it's coming on and getting on to temperature, you can expect that to be the maximum amount of juice that that uh, compressor is going to take, if you will. So I'd like to see what that maximum amount is, and we'll see if it's any better than this Dometic. All right, so I've got the left zone temp set at 39, which is, you know, about cooler temperature, and right zone temp set at 14, which I guess would be freezer. I'm not real sure what you would set a freezer at. I'll have to look that up. So right now it should be using the absolute max that it's going to use in order to get this thing cooled down so let's see what we're looking for. all right with both zones on and cooling at their maximum power to get down from 68 degrees to their set temperatures the ice is pulling less than 70 watts which is way better than that old dometic let's go ahead and get that thing ripped out of there i was able to move everything out of here 
and here and I put it all in there now the one thing that I will say is and hopefully I can come up with something hopefully I can come up with some sort of an organizational system uh, anyway this is freezer over here and this is the fridge over here and I know it looks like everything's just jostled in there but it actually is set in there relatively neat obviously the contents there will change quite a bit but sometimes it doesn't ideally i wouldn't have eggs in there either ideally i'd have eggs out because they'd be fresh eggs but this is the current setup that we have and everything does fit just so you know and now we can turn this off so one of the obstacles with putting in that new fridge is going to be coming up with a solution for these vent holes here these vent holes go all the way through the walls and into the back area behind the fridge all right so i've got the access cover off and we can see that the fridge is plugged in right here and take that out so it's plugged in with ac and then there's some dc going to it as well right there and then right here is the propane line now this thing is held in by six screws there'll be two back here and then four up front normally the two back here though are like 10 millimeter self-tapping bolts but as you can see here with grand designs uh just one more area that they wanted to save a little moolah i reckon but yeah so once i get these bolts out then we'll just be able to slide that bad boy right on out shit i don't even know if these are even doing anything look they're just freely spinning crazy Now to remove the propane line, I'm gonna use a three quarters inch and a 17. And the propane fitting that I have is a three eighths inch flare. Just gonna go in like that. This could be a little tricky, holding it and tightening it all at the same time, but we'll get it. Make sure it's good and tight. Now we're good to go. We don't have to worry about that any longer. All right, and the next task is to disconnect the DC power, which is this right here. So here's an interesting development. I've got every size Phillips head imaginable, but it seems that I have the same exact size flathead bit everywhere. And I cannot find a smaller one to fit down into that DC uh, connection there, which happens to be a flathead uh, screw. I don't... It's crazy. All right, luckily I've got the old uh, trusty Gerber tool here in the back of Apple that has the right size uh, flathead, I believe. Jeez, I never knew that would be such an issue. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out and then I'm gonna cap them off with these crimps here. All right, so those are now capped off. Good to go as far as that goes. Now I'll eventually rewire that to run into the back of the new fridge. All right, so now that everything's disconnected, what I've got to do is I've got to take this top plate off and I'm gonna access two screws there and then there's two screws down in the bottom. Now, depending on your style fridge will depend on how this thing is held on. Mine, luckily, is just a little clamp style, but some of them I have seen uh, have little screws right here. So just pay attention to how it is, but you can see I just lift up slightly both sides, and then it's got a little cord connected to it. Be very careful when you pull this cord out. I just kind of wiggle it real gentle. Once it's unconnected, set this to the side. And you can see up here where the two pieces of tape are, you pull those down and you'll find those two screws that I'm talking about. So we'll go ahead and undo those. All right, and now down here, you'll see that the two screws are kind of in an angle right here at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and undo those. At the bottom there's a little metal plate here you're going to take this off and depending on the make and model of your camper you may have some sealant down here 
Um, we're dealing with grand designs here, so they didn't bother to seal it up at any point down here. So with everything out now, we should be able to just slide this bad boy right on out. If you hold your tongue correctly and wiggle and pull, you should be able to get this bad boy out of here. And just like that, we are fridgeless. Well, sort of. Man, that's going to require a whole lot more modification than I originally thought. It'll be all right. I'm going to have to relocate the propane line there, um, get it out of the floor area, and then take this board off and maybe leave that board. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to block off the top vent with one of these boards here. But I have to get these boards out of the way before the fridge will even slide in. All right, so got this rubber stuff off of the propane line here now I need to figure out where it's at so I can go feed it underneath all right so as I suspected the uh, propane line comes up underneath this base on the inside here so fair enough we'll just leave it sitting down there so the fridge has both 12 volt and 120 volt hookups. Now this is a 12 volt that was on the old fridge. So what I'm gonna do is hook this up to the 12 volt line that came with the fridge, but the 12 volt line that came with the fridge actually has one of those cigarette lighter uh, plug-in styles on there. So I'm gonna have to cut that off and then wire it into the positive to positive, negative to negative, crimp it with some crimps like you see here, and uh, everything should be well with that. But I'm going to use an old one that I have laying around first to test it out before I do that to the one they sent with the brand new Ice Co. Alright, so this is the connector that came with the Ice Co. Or one similar to the one that came with the Ice Co. This is off of another Ice Co. that I've had in the past. What I found is that the uh, cord side with all the writing on it, that is your positive and the other one is your negative. So I'm just going to cut this car plug adapter off and then rewire it into the 12 volt line that I have already in the camper. Now I've already taken the time to do this but if you haven't already make sure that you verify that this is for sure positive and this is for sure negative. Uh, sometimes they do have them backwards. I did this yesterday so positive and negative. Now if you have a soldering gun this is a good time to go ahead and break it out and I will do just that in the final design. But right now I'm simply just hooking it up make sure everything right and I still got to design out the final design later on so I'm just going to use these uh, crimp caps all right so the top board is just stapled into here and then they screw this into the wall and that I'm probably going to reuse in order to block up that vent there for the meantime all right and now we have a cabinet so now we go down here and we put this guy back in and let's see if we got fridge great success all right so my temporary solution to block off this top vent is i'm just going to place one of those boards i took down back up there and then staple it to the frame that's already in there again this isn't going to be the final design this is only to test out how we want to set up the final design so we'll live with this for a little while we'll figure out what's good what's bad where it needs to go and where's the most ideal place for the new fridge now i'm going to run some tests to see what's more efficient the dc or the ac on this particular fridge i don't know that it matters but we'll find out in due time i do already have an ac outlet here for the old fridge so i'm just going to use that um, but if i didn't have that ac outlet there or if for any reason i didn't have an inverter to run the batteries into ac mode then i could just stop here with the dc connection and it would be all good what i will tell you is this thing sounds a hell of a lot happier with uh that fridge in there than the last one quicker too all right well it's been over a year now since we've installed this ice coat vl90 pro and it's been working flawlessly providing us with ice cold beer at a fraction of the power usage that that old dometic did as you can see we still haven't figured out what we're going to do with this spot i think we've got it figured out but we haven't done it yet so we're thinking that maybe we make this into our new pantry and then where the pantry is currently we'll make that into our work spot but we're still working on that until now 
The Iceco VL90 Pro is working flawlessly at keeping everything cold. So with the fridge and the freezer on both at the same time, I've never seen this thing pull more than about 75 watts, which is again a fraction of what that old Dometic did. So it's definitely worth the upgrade when it comes to power saving. As far as the opening up from the top, I don't see any problem with that. Some people might see a problem with it, but I haven't had any issues with it. And I think Christy's gotten used to it as well. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button. If you want to follow our adventures, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, you guys keep hanging in there like a hair on a biscuit. And remember, you can be happy if you've a mind to. Peace, y'all.